The lab this week is on the microscope in the cell, and I just want to do a quick overview so you know what to expect as you're working through this lab. You should have your spiral bound lab manual handy. You should download the lab report from Blackboard and have that ready to go with your name on it. And you should be online uh, accessing bio lab manual so that you can click on the microscope and cell section uh, and work through these different parts of the lab. Notice that the microscope and cell lab it is listed um, further down on the course. It's after taxonomy. Remember, don't go with the order, go off of the name. So always make sure you've got the right lab based off the name. So let's look at this lab report. Uh, the first section is purpose of the microscope. And you don't have any questions to answer there. You'll just work through this section one, reading that material in your manual and the, the slides online, but you don't have to put anything in the report. The section, second section uh, goes over the parts of the microscope, and you will have uh, a video as well as interactive uh, picture to help you answer these questions to fill out the parts of the microscope, so that should be pretty simple. The next section has to do with calculating microscope magnification. Uh, what's important here is that you need to take into effect or take into account the eyepiece magnification. On a microscope, there's the eyepiece at the top, and that has a 10x or a 10 times magnification associated with it. And then the objective lenses, which are below, each have a different amount of magnification associated with them. When you're calculating the total magnification, you multiply the magnification of the eyepiece, which is 10 times or 10x, times the lens power or the magnification of the different lenses. The scanning lens is the shortest, smallest lens, and it has a 4 times or 4x magnification. So the total magnification would be the eyepiece magnification, which is 10x, times the scanning lens magnification, which is 4x, which would give you a total of 40 times or 40x. Another example is a low power lens. It has a 10x or 10 times magnification. So you multiply the eyepiece magnification of 10x times the magnification of the low power lens itself, which is also 10x, to give you a total of 100 times or 100x magnification when you're looking through that lens. The next section is going to be viewing microscope slides. Uh, what you'll notice here, and I know this is weird because you're not actually focusing and looking at the microscope uh, yourself, you're watching someone else do it and then looking at a video, uh, but what you'll notice is that the image that you see through the eyepiece is actually moving in the opposite direction from what direction the slide itself is moving. So for example, if the slide is moved away from you under the microscope, what you see through the eyepiece is the image moving towards you. So it's always the opposite. Uh, so when you answer these questions four and five, make sure you read in your lab manual uh, to see what the original direction is. So on this first one, exercise 2.4, question four, if you look on page 2-8 in your lab manual, uh, what it says at the bottom there is, with the scanning lens in place, the prepared slide is moved to the right while watching the image through the microscope. What direction does the image move? So if the prepared slide is moved to the right, the image is going to go in the opposite direction, which means the image is going to move towards the left. For question five, that answer or that question is at the top of page 2-9 in your lab manual. It says the slide is moved away from you. So the answer to what direction does the image move would be towards you because the slide is moving away from you, so what you see through the eyepiece is the image actually moving towards you. The next section is on microscopic measurement. Uh, this is a section that a lot of students have some trouble with, so I am going to go through this uh, a little bit more in detail than I did the other sections. So let's look at this. This is section four. So read the introduction to this part. And what you're going to do is this view is actually looking, what you would see if you were looking through the microscope, um, and this total diameter here with the scanning lens, so it's a 40 times magnification, um, the total diameter that you're seeing with this ruler is about 4.4 millimeters. So you're looking at a ruler through the microscopic lens, and you can see this part of it. Each of these little units is one millimeter, so that's a total of 4.4 millimeters. 
So the field of view, the total diameter for the field of view for the scanning lens is 4.4 millimeters. Typically, because the objects that we're looking at through a microscope are so very, very small, we don't actually use millimeters. We use a unit called a micrometer. Uh, and one millimeter is equal to a thousand micrometers. So micrometer is tiny, tiny, tiny. Uh, and the unit there is this little Greek letter um, with the M is for micrometer. So one millimeter equals a thousand micrometers. We just said that the field of view for a scanning lens is 4.4 millimeters. If there are a thousand micrometers in one millimeter, then the diameter for the field of view for the scanning power lens would be 4,400 micrometers. So what that means is the entire diameter of the circle, the field of view, is 4,400 micrometers. So you can see, based off of that information, that you should be able to calculate roughly uh, how big this E is in micrometers. And that's what we're going to do next. All right, so this is zoomed in um, for low power lens, which is a total magnification of 100x. And what you're going to do is you're going to use this calculation to figure out, based off the information that we know that the 40x lens is 4,400 micrometers, what then would be the diameter of the 100x magnification or the low power lens. And so you do this calculation and figure out that it's 1.76 millimeters or uh, 1,760 micrometers. And that is the measurement across the diameter for this field of view. You'll notice that the E gets bigger as you zoom in, and the field of view gets smaller. So you're zooming in, the magnification gets higher, and the field of view gets more and more uh, small. So you're going to do the same thing as you keep zooming in for a high power lens. Uh, the high power lens has a 400 times magnification. So you do the same calculation to figure out the field of view diameter for high power, and that's 0.44 millimeters or 40, 440 micrometers. And then oil immersion, which is the strongest magnification, uh, a thousand times total magnification, is the smallest field of view, 0.176 millimeters or 176 micrometers. So this information is what you're going to fill in on your lab manual. So you should have your total magnification already figured out from the previous chart. 4.4 millimeters, which is 4,400 micrometers. Low power is 100 times 1.76 and 100. And then high power is 400 times total magnification. We just figured out that's 0.44 millimeters or, 400, or 440 micrometers. And then oil immersion is the last one. It's a thousand times total magnification, 0.176 millimeters or 176 micrometers in diameter. So you're going to use this information for this next part, which is estimating the size of a specimen. So for example, this first one, let's look at it to give you something to start with. This specimen, so this object right here, fills about one-third of the diameter. So about three of these specimens would fit all the way across the diameter, so the field of view diameter, and this is looking at under the scanning lens. That's what it tells us here, so it's a 40x total magnification. So if you know that it takes up one-third of that space, and we know that the scanning lens has a total diameter of 4,400 micrometers, then we can estimate that the size of this object is one-third times 4,400, rounded to 1,467 micrometers. So that is what you would put. Sorry, let's go to the next one here. All right, so the next part is in your lab manual. So you should be looking at, let's see what page this is. Uh, it starts at the bottom of 2-10 where you're answering the questions for steps one and two. And so what it says, it gives you a picture at the top of page 2-11 uh, for a specimen that is under low power, so 100 times magnification, uh, and you have to kind of figure out the diameter of that specimen. 
knowing that under low power, the total diameter is 1,760 micrometers, you can look at that specimen and see that it takes up about one-fifth of that total diameter. So the way that you would calculate that answer would be, let me do it over here, so one-fifth times low power is 1,760 micrometers total, and so that would give us an answer of 352 micrometers is the estimated length of that specimen. Let's look at the second one. So the second one is on in the middle of the page 2-11 in your lab manual. And this one is under, let's see, high power. So 400 times magnification. We know that under high power, the 400 times magnification, the total field of view is 440. And that specimen would appear to take up, hmm, we'll say about a third. So we're measuring the length of it, kind of the height of the specimen. So if it takes up about a third of that entire field of view, then we would say 440 times one third, and that equals 147. So the answer there would be 147 micrometers. So we've discussed this already, but the relationship between the diameter of the field of view and its power of magnification is that the higher magnification you get, the smaller the field of view. So it's an inverse relationship. Let's answer one more question to make sure you have the hang of it. If you have a specimen that fills one quarter or one fourth the field of view under an oil immersion lens, how long is that specimen? Oil immersion lens is a thousand times magnification. The diameter in micrometers is 176. So you would say one quarter times 176, and that would be 44, mil 44 micrometers. And this is supposed to be a micrometer here, even though it looks like it's a capital M. That is a micrometer. One more, specimen fills one quarter of the field of view under a scanning lens. Scanning lens, total diameter is 4,400. So one quarter times 4,400 equals 1,100 micrometers. All right, so you can kind of do the rest there. You get the hang of that. This last question where it says draw a cheek cell, what you might want to do is hold off on that actually until you get to the cheek cell portion of the lab. Come back to this question because later on, after you do the depth of focus, you're going to be looking at characteristics of cells. You'll have prokaryotic cells first, which are bacteria, and then you'll get into cheek cells. So when you do this, record the cell size for this section on the cheek cell. Go ahead and enter that data or that measurement uh, up here under this question. Now real quick, uh, under the bacterial cells, it might be helpful if you have your textbook handy for this. Um, page 44 in your textbook will help you label the structures of the bacterial cell um, as well as your lab manual. And then, let's see, For the eukaryotic cell portion, you're going to be recording sizes and magnifications. Um, when you're looking at the arrangement of chloroplast, nucleus, and vacuole, uh, remember that the vacuole is clear. You can't see it. So it's basically just the space in the middle of the cell. The chloroplasts are going to be green because of chlorophyll. And then the nucleus is not going to be green. It's going to be a kind of round, amber-shaped object uh, near the middle of the cell. When you're looking at the onion bulb cells, uh, you'll notice there are no green organelles. So what would that tell you? That would tell you that there are no chloroplasts present, which means that photosynthesis is not going to occur. When you're doing this last section on labeling plant cells uh, and animal cells, if you use page 48 in your textbook, that will be helpful to you in addition to the information in the lab manual and online. And then don't forget your summary questions before you turn it in.